Hello, everyone. My name is Jun Seok Park. I am an assistant professor at the University of Texas at Tyler. And uh, this is my honor to have a keynote speech on advances on societal digital transformation conference. The title of, title of today's talk is streamed media and quality of experience. So today's talk is organized in this way. So I will start from introduction of streamed media and I'll introduce quality of experience based streaming algorithms that I have uh, proposed to improve the streamed media. And I'll conclude the, today's talk. So I'll start from the streamed media. Uh, there are many uh, streaming services nowadays, such as YouTube, Disney Plus, or many, there, there are many kind of on the top video services. Those are all based on streamed media. So nowadays we don't have, we don't really need any setup box or other storage devices to play the video. But if we can all uh, get the video streams anytime if we have the internet connections. And actually dynamic adaptive streaming on HTTP, in short dash, uh, realize the streaming services. When we stream the video over the internet, the most of, most of the concern is quality of the media because network bandwidth always changes. So we cannot always guarantee that we can deliver such high quality video over the internet. Therefore, the adaptive bitrate streaming platforms are introduced and the most popularly used uh, streaming platform is Dash. It basically works in this way. As we can see in this figure, there is an HTTP server, which is not uh, designed for the video server. It is the same for any other uh, internet services. And this HTTP, HTTP server will store the video as a smaller uh, video chunks. The reason we have a uh, video uh, smaller chunk video chunks is because the size of the video is too large when we only uh, when we store the whole video with a single file, and we may take a lot of time to download the sing that video file. Therefore, it divides all the video into the smaller chunks and it client can receive the smaller video chunks every time they require the video segments. And the other important part is uh, we can encode all the video chunks with different qualities. And we, we can save the video with higher quality, with higher bit rate, and we can have lower quality and lower bit rate. So therefore, if there's some network uh, bandwidth changes, client can request uh, lower uh, quality videos. Therefore, they can still receive uh, the video <clears throat> on time to play, uh, to continue playback of the video. So this will be, this platform is a client-centric read adaptation because what server is do is just storing the video with different qualities and the client will determine which quality they want to play based on the network condition. And there are a lot of advantages of this platform because then we don't need to, the server need to, server doesn't need to uh, specify their uh, adaptation algorithm for many devices. At these times, there are many uh, video playing devices such as mobile devices, like uh, handheld devices or tablet, or it, it could be uh, TV. So client can adjust their quality of the video based on their uh, environment. If it is the wired, con wired internet connection, they may have very stable internet connection so they can receive 
high quality video stably, but if we have the wireless connection, which is not stable, then mobile uh, devices can request uh, sometimes higher quality video and sometimes lower quality video based on their network conditions. And that's the reason nowadays, many video streaming services are using Dash as their streaming platform. And then uh, the question is, how can we ad adapt the rate of the video based on the network conditions? Even though we have a lower quality, lower network bandwidth sometimes, but still we need, we want to have higher video quality, even though there are some network variations. So there, there that's why we uh, introduce buffer in the client side. So client can have some <clears throat> margin to control their quality of the video, even though the um, network condition change very fast. So there are many uh, rate adaptation algorithms were introduced to adaptively change their uh, video quality based on the network condition and the buffer status. And also, after uh, video streaming uh, is getting more in, uh, popular, nowadays people are more interested in uh, the advanced multimedia platforms like v virtual reality or augmented realities. And this chart shows that in the future, there will be a, a, a lot of um, growth in the VR and AR uh, streaming platforms. So what we can see here is uh, VR or uh, high definition VR, ultra high definition VR will be dominant in the future in the media streaming platform. Therefore, we need to um, prepare how we can service this VR and uh, augmented reality traffic over the internet. And there are some specific challenges for the VR and AR systems. I will first uh, start with the challenges in 360 degree video streaming because 360 degree videos are the base uh, fundamentals of the uh, virtual reality applications. Basically 360 degree video uh, provides the all around view to the user so user can uh, look around their uh, environment. But the problem is uh, in much, it requires much higher video rate, four to six times more than conventional videos because user will specifically see some part of the video. And it means there will be a lot of uh, area non-visible, but still we need to provide very high quality on their view. And if you don't know how much, how, what will be the view of the user, then we have to provide high quality videos for all around the 360 uh, degree. But it means there, there can be some uh, chance that we can save up to 80% of the bandwidth by removing non-visual part of the video because typically the viewport, the video that user will really see is only 20% of the full 360 degree video. Therefore, the tiled media is introduced. 360 degree video is divided into tiles, which is the smaller videos. So for example, in this case, we, we have 360 degree video that is projected into the 2D plane and these videos will be divided into the smaller tiles and they, they will be encoded separately. And to indicate which tiles are, exi are existing in the, in the video set, so we introduce the spatial relationship descriptor to describe the tile configuration. How many tiles are there and what kind of uh, encoding techniques were uh, applied to the tiles. Therefore, if user can receive the tiles and the spatial relationship descriptor, they can recover 
um, the original video from this data. And it, it will also introduce some uh, challenges compared to the original video streaming systems. And we can see uh, the different difficulties with these <coughs> figures. First, uh, with the video, which means the 2D videos like the YouTube or Netflix videos, there is the rate adaptation algorithm. So when we watch this kind of scare video, then only thing that we need to consider is a temporal variation of the quality based on the network condition. But in case of the tiled media or VR or AR systems, then there's one more thing that we need to consider. <clears throat> there will be both temporal variation of the quality, but there will be spatial variation too, because there are multiple tiles and we need to control the quality of tile, each tiles every segments. So then that's why we have temporal and spatial variation. And there will be user behavior. So sometimes user will see uh, this part of the video, but they can change their view in the next time. And that must be considered when we control the quality of the segments and the tiles. <clears throat> so that is the difficulty of this work. So, and uh, in case of the AR systems, we what we have to see is the um, hologram, which is represented by 3D point cloud, because to implement the uh, augmented reality systems, we have to overlap certain objects to the real scenes. And because user can change their view, so the, uh, something that is overlapped with the real scene must have uh, 3D uh, volume. Therefore, we can provide uh, any direction of the view. So the 3D point cloud uh, must be provided for the AR systems. And actually the 3D point cloud has also very large uh, data rate because it needs to save the color of the, uh, the 3D point cloud. And also it requires uh, geometry of each point. Therefore, we have a lot of data and uh, some loss of the data will affect more on the quality of the 3D point cloud. And to solve this problem, again, we can apply the 3D tiles. So this, this is the one of the uh, platform that we can transmit the 3D tiles over the internet. The idea is similar to the tiles in the, in the uh, 360 degree video. So first we can generate the 3D point cloud using capture stage and using the concept of the voxelized point cloud. And then we can divide this point cloud into the 3D tiles, which are some, and the 3D tiles are just part of the point clouds. And we can also generate the multiple representation or quality of the tiles. And the server will save all these uh, multiple version of the tile, 3D tiles. And then user can uh, request uh, appropriate tiles and the quality to the server when uh, based on the user's viewport changes and the network conditions. And there will be also the buffer to have some margin to uh, play back, continue playback of the video. So in some way, uh, in for the VR or AR system, uh, we can, the data types are different, but we can apply similar uh, algorithm to play back the videos for the VR and AR systems. So now we are going to talk about uh, the algorithm that we, we can uh, really streaming the tiles uh, to, imp to have high quality of experience. So first, we then we need to define 
uh, segment tiles MP4 to be uh, streaming the tiles over the internet. <clears throat> so first we we'll want to define the segment and the segment itself is defined as one to 15 second duration of video chunks. So for example, if we have one hour of the video, then there will be multiple segments that represents one to 15 second duration of the video. So in, in our experiment, we do have one second video chunks. And the tile is spatially divided video. So for example, if we have this uh, rectangular video, we can divide this video into uh, four tiles. So we have four tiles in here. And every segment, we will divide them into four tiles. And the next part thing is viewport. And the viewport means the pixels that users watch at this time. So for example, if you have large this rectangular video, not all of these areas are visible to the user at some time, at some point. And because of that, uh, we need to define this viewport. And viewport means actual pixels that user is now watching. So based on this definition, uh, we, what we can uh, do is following the viewport. As since the viewer will change their viewport while during um, during the watching their videos, so we, their viewport will change and it means uh, the required tile to render. The viewport will change again, like this. Over the time, we have different viewport and at the same at the first time we require to have tile one to three to render the viewport and the second time we have tile two three four to render the viewport and the third uh, we have tile three and four to render the viewport um, and it will change over time and for uh, we can easily uh, we can better simplify these um, things in this way. So we have a uh, time domain and the tile domain in uh, Y axis. So first uh, we will define the view, which is a little different from the viewport. So first uh, the view, the definition of view means the set of tiles that we uh, really require to have to render the viewport. So for example, from tile not to tile from tile plus D, where this uh, time indicates one segment. Uh, <clears throat> within the, uh, the one segment, the uh, user can change their viewport. So for example, here, user change their viewport from here to here. And it means uh, the total uh, tiles that we require to actually render all the views in this one segment will be one, two, three, tile one, two, three. And if you see the third uh, segment, so this is the first, third segment. And if you see the set of tiles that we require to render all the view in these two, in this segment will be tile three and four. So we need uh, these tiles. And these set of tiles can be defined as a view. And we, def uh, we use this view concept to really uh, transmit the uh, data over the internet. And next we introduce the navigation graph to really, <clears throat> uh, to really understand how users change their view and based on that understanding how we can deliver uh, the tiles over the internet. So we, uh, we define the graph based on the view and view changes over the segments. So there are two <clears throat> uh, definitions of the navigation graph. First, we can define the uh, vertices in two ways. First, the vertices can have the in, uh, segment index L and the set of tiles S0. And zero, uh, where the zero means uh, the index of the uh, segments. So it can change uh, from uh, one to uh, zero to uh, L. 
So this is the first uh, definition. And the second definition what we can have for the vertex is just set of visible tiles. And we can use this, these two different definitions for different applications. And based on these two uh, <coughs> definitions, what we can do is like generating these two kind of graph. So if we uh, define uh, the vertex as the first definition, having the index of the segment, then we can generate this uh, kind of graph with this uh, visible uh, uh, viewing behavior of the users. And if we have second uh, definition of the vertex, then we can generate this kind of uh, graph using this uh, viewing behavior. And we're going to use uh, different these two uh, graph for two different applications. And now this is the um, proposed system that using navigation graph for the streaming of the uh, VR videos or tiled media. So first the video server will uh, have a navigation graph that is uh, recording the user behavior as a tiles uh, as a uh, tiles and the segment in this way. And the client will also save their uh, navigation graph based on uh, their set of tiles and the segment. And as we can see that they will have different types of the navigation graph. First, uh, this video server will save the navigation graph using the first definition of the vertex. And the second, uh, the client will save the second definition of the vertex. So we call the navigation graph at the server as uh, the navigation graph in the server and the client will have the navigation graph for the client. And they have different applications. And we're going to talk about that too. So we can use uh, the navigation graph in different ways. First, we can record the view history of single user or the cross user uh, view. First, the client uh, will capture the single user uh, view using the navigation graph. So the client only have their own uh, view data. Therefore, they will store that data on the client side using <coughs> the client side uh, navigation graph. And the cross user view prediction is possible at the server. So using the multiple users uh, view data, so user, uh, the server will save uh, the cross user uh, navigation graph. And these all two will be used for uh, the prediction of the uh, viewport uh, for the feature using the view history. But another application for uh, the navigation graph is semantic recording the semantic information of the video. So basically the, the navigation graph record the movement or movement of the v, uh, user's behavior or movement of the um, objects in the video using set of the tiles. So we can record uh, those kind of behavior of the objects in the video using uh, navigation graph too. So we can uh, record semantic information that further improve the prediction of the users behavior uh, in addition to the uh, view history. So that's the one, one, part, one more part that we can do with navigation graph. So the first part of our, my uh, presentation will include the view history based uh, view prediction and uh, the second part will include the semantic information based uh, view predictions. So now we are going to see uh, how we can really implement the history-based uh, navigation graph. So I'll, I'll let, uh, introduce how we can really build the navigation graph at the server and how we can utilize this for the prediction of the uh, viewport. So for example, let's say we have three consecutive seg video segments 
and there are there were three clients. Then we can uh, then we have their all, three clients behavior. So they changes their viewport starting from here, here and here, and the six, client two will change their viewport from here to here and again come back to here. And the third client will change their viewport from here, here and here. So using this, uh, what we can start with is uh, the first vertex, which includes the index of the segment, which is L minus two. So this segment is indicated as segment L minus two, and all three of them has the same viewport, which is two, four, five, seven. So we have set uh, tile set two, four, five, seven, which means we had all three of users as only one uh, selection. So we generate the, this vertex. And in the following segments at L minus one, so the vertex now has a uh, segment index L minus one, L minus one. Then we have um, two possible choices now because client one, uh, stays in the same viewport in the second segment, but client two and four changes their viewport to the other set of the tiles. So here, then it means we need to generate another uh, two vertices, which is L minus one and two, four, five, seven, which is for this one. And the second we have, we need to have vertex L minus one and five, six, seven, eight tiles. And then what we can also do is generating the edges. So for example, so out of three users, they change their viewport to here. Just one user changed the same, uh, this viewport. So one user out of three user changed just their status from here to here. And out of three users, uh, two user changes their viewport from here to here. So we have two out of three. So it means our transition probability will be one third and two thirds for these two users. And using this method, we can generate uh, the navigation graph uh, in this way. And the client side, uh, uh, the, the way that we can generate the uh, navigation graph will be very similar. But the only thing is now we don't have any index for the segments. So it just want to capture how how often the the user changes their viewport within the video. So their concentrations are a little different. So the navigation graph at the server more concentrated on how many users are changing their viewport at certain segment to the other, but in the navigation graph at the client, it more concentrates on how often they change their viewport. Uh, no matter how their segments are. So it, uh, the navigation graph at the client side uh, basically captures user its own behavior and a navigation graph at the server will capture the uh, statistics of the viewers there, when there are multiple viewers. And using those two navigation graph, uh, we can predict uh, users view in the future. So the single user prediction uh, will be using navigation graph at the client side and the cross user prediction will use uh, navigation graph at the server side. So we can predict what will, so based on uh, the new, our observation uh, with generated navigation graph, we can predict the user's behavior in the next. And the outcome of this prediction will be the probability matrices for the every tiles. So it means it will give us the probability that uh, the certain tiles will be required in the future. So this is this uh, prediction matrices will be the outcome of the prediction uh, results. So it means. Uh, based on the current uh, user's behavior and the previous user's behavior, we can uh, get the prediction metrics that for, for the future 
uh, tiles. Then based on this, we can request uh, which tile should have higher quality and which tile should have uh, lower quality to provide high quality video to the users uh, with the network variations. And based on this uh, result, we can actually do the race selection for the tile media. And actually this is based on uh, this utility maximization problem. So within the uh, limited bandwidth, what we want to do is maximize the expected uh, utility. And the utility is uh, measured by uh, future uh, quality of the viewport based on the prediction matrix P. So we have performed this uh, algorithm. And because there are two <clears throat> uh, prediction method that we can use, uh, one is single user view prediction and the other one is cross user view prediction. So we are switching between these two algorithms to really perform the view prediction. And based on this result, we'll do the race selection and actual uh, requesting of the tiles to the server. So we do the evaluation with the uh, certain data set. So we have used uh, real video, VR videos and real head motion data. And the data set we have used is published in uh, MMCS 2017. And we also use the net real district uh, network traces, which is captured by uh, HSDPA bandwidth logs uh, for the mobile HTTP streaming scenario. And what we measured is the precision, prediction errors, and VPSNR effective rates. And the, this is the prediction result first without the streaming algorithm. So it shows that when we uh, have a uh, single user view prediction and this uh, cross user view prediction, single user view prediction shows better pre precision for uh, the shorter range <coughs> predictions. And the cross user uh, view prediction has better, <coughs> better performance for the uh, longer um, horizon predictions. And the reason is because uh, the single user, pre user view prediction uh, concentrated on a uh, user itself. And in, it tells us that a uh, user will tend to uh, move their heads based on their own behavior. So it means what just one, if you want to predict the one second after future, then it is better to refer the single user view prediction. But longer view uh, uh, prediction horizon, it's better to have a cross user view prediction. And this is because uh, users tends to move their head based on the contents of the video. And this data can be captured by many users uh, viewing behavior. And that's why we have a uh, better precision for the longer uh, prediction horizon. And when it, uh, switching between them, we can achieve uh, better uh, precision results. And we compare this uh, our proposed algorithm with the other uh, existing algorithm like linear regression and linear regression with Gaussian assumption and CLS, those are the uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, algorithm using cross-layer, uh, cross-user um, data. And it shows that we can achieve better uh, precision result compared to the other algorithm. And we also see, have watched uh, what actual quality of the uh, videos it shows the, which can be represented by VPSNR and the effective rates. And we can, what we can see is uh, using the single user plus uh, cross user prediction algorithm, we can have better uh, VPSNR and the effective rate, which means uh, user will watch the video in their viewport with better quality compared to the other algorithm. Next, what we will see is semantic aware navigation graph. <clears throat> so until now, a uh, history-based user algorithm only uh, what us, uh, refer the uh, view history of the users. 
But as we is, can easily think that user will turn their head based on the uh, video contents. If there is something interesting thing happens in the video, then they will easily turn their head based on the video contents. And the thing that we want to do with this work is how we can relate the video contents and the user behavior in uh, the videos. So for example, here, this is the uh, one captured image of the video. And we can, what we can easily see is there are three objects. So there is a monster, there is person one and person two. It means when at this time, if, we, if the user is watching the monster here, then in the next few, uh, in, in the next frame, user will tend to follow this monster. So if you can understand how this monster is using uh, moving in the video, then it may help us to predict the uh, user behavior. So we, we modified the dash system and introduced uh, two more concepts for the advanced uh, multimedia presentation description. So we introduced the semantic flow descriptor and the object view object state machine. So view object state machine and the, uh, uh, the semantic flow descriptor will be stored in the uh, media server where the semantic flow descriptor will uh, store the movement of the objects in the contents and then uh, views object state machine will record the multiple users viewing, viewing behavior based on the object's movement. So we have a layered architecture of the media presentation description. So originally media presentation description for the dash only have uh, the information about the encoding of the segments. So it includes the how long does the segments are and uh, what kind of encoding techniques are used for uh, encoding of the videos. And there is dash SRD where the SRD represent the uh, spatial relationship descriptor because for the <clears throat> VR systems, uh, there are tiles. So SRD introduce, in, uh, includes the information of the tiles. So that's more advanced. It is more advanced uh, MPD. But in our CR system, uh, we have two more descriptor, which is SFD and VOSM, where the SFD gives the information where the objects are in terms of the tiles. So it means if you want to uh, see certain objects, uh, it gives us the information that which tiles should be uh, transmitted. And the VOSM includes the view object mapping. So it relates the object's movement and the user behavior. And using these two information, we can improve the uh, prediction of the viewport. So let's see what is the semantic flow descriptor. So semantic flow descriptor uh, stores the location information of the objects. For example, if we have two objects in the video, for example, person and the car, and if, if there's a person um, stays in this area, then we require to have tile four and 10. So we can record uh, this information as four and 10 at the SFD one, L I minus two, where I minus two indicate <coughs> the segment. And we can also record the uh, object's uh, location, like car as a 15, because 15 is the tile that includes the car. So we can uh, include, include this data as F SFD two, I minus two. And in the next segment, we can uh, save the locations of the objects as a tile in this way. So it can show when uh, the objects will appear in the video and when they vanish or uh, where they are. 
and it can also check where the, uh, the objects will move. And the VOSM is used for uh, recording how many of the viewers are interested in, in certain objects. So when there are multiple viewers, we'll, it will record how they are changing their interests on the objects. Sometimes they can have no interest on certain objects, but they can have uh, see some of the object at certain point. And, we, um, and the VOSM can record how they can change their interests or how they move their interests over the segments. And using this information, what we can do is the prediction of the uh, interest of the users in the following segments. Because now we already have this kind of uh, graph, which is the VOSM here. And if the current data is given, then it, we can easily get what will be the next uh, interest on uh, using others uh, view interest data. And to really implement uh, this algorithm, we also introduced the view motion vector, which is ideally inspired, actually in, inspired by the view, uh, uh, inspired by the motion vector in the MPEG. So, but here what we do is uh, we can get the view motion vector based on the movement of the objects. So the view motion vector will give us the information that when we have when we know which uh, person is introduced introdu interested in certain objects and they will follow the objects, then the view motion vector will give us the information that how actually they should change their view or change their uh, interest on tiles, not the objects, to really uh, follow really shows the uh, interested objects in the next view. And this is the experimental setup. Again, we have used uh, same data set for the navigation graph. And we performed the YOLO based object detection and tracking algorithm to uh, store the SFD on the server side. And we, can, we compare the algorithm with the navigation graph in linear regression, mono, and ideal. And the net <clears throat> network condition is given as wired network or the mobile network. So we have um, constant, we can model the constant throughput or the variable throughput of the network. And we have compared the uh, viewport, <clears throat> PSNR, and average blank area, where the average blank area means when you want, when user watch the viewport, there could be some uh, blank area, which means there will there are some required uh, tiles, but actually we didn't, so it shows nothing. So that's the per, uh, percentage that how <clears throat> how many how much chance that we shows the blank area. So if you have larger blank area, that's uh, not a good thing. And what we can see is. Uh, CWR system can achieve very close uh, performance with the ideal cases. So where the green uh, shows the ideal case, the, uh, the CWR system can achieve very close performance with the ideal case. It means you can have very uh, good uh, prediction result. <clears throat> and we also analyze the overhead of the system because there are a lot of processing will happen. But first, what we can see is uh, most of the processing will happen in offline, which means server will process all the da <coughs> data like the SFD and uh, VOSM uh, before we start the streaming. So, you know, it, and it also take, only takes like four minutes per video and 25 uh, seconds for the VOSM. So it is uh, fairly fast. <laughs> and, 
And there's only one uh, online process, which is the uh, view prediction, and it only takes 2.2 milliseconds, which is uh, much less than 20 milliseconds, which is a uh, deadline um, for the uh, perceived uh, latencies. And this is a uh, little bit higher with the <clears throat> linear regression, but much faster than the navigation graph. So this, uh, uh, so it means still we can uh, run this uh, real time. So user will not feel the latency because of the uh, view prediction. So there is a conclusions. So the various multimedia data are streamed over the internet these days. So we, it means we need to prepare uh, some advanced multimedia data to be streamed. And the navigation graph I introduced uh, were <coughs> helpful to improve the QOE of the streamed media by prediction of the future behavior. So I hope this could uh, be really implemented on real systems and I'll keep continue working on um, the an analyzing the advanced multimedia and the streaming uh, platforms. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this talk and hope you have enjoyed uh, this conference. Thank you.